Once in 2007, on a Sunday evening, I got a phone call, and it was a staff person from the governor's office. And they said, would you be interested in co-caring and co-authoring with Representative Severson, because I understand that you and Representative Severson are friends. And I said, let me check, and I'll check, and I'll see if I can do that. And I was allowed to do that. And those were major bills. And we got help from Junkie and Otremba and, and Coonan to allow us to pass through and this is probably the best legislative changes to making Minnesota a friendly state. Now let's go back to Severson and I being friends. <laughs> let's stop on that a second. How is that possible, you ask? Because we must, we must disagree on almost every issue. That is not true. We agree on 70% of all issues. And I just forgive him for being so blatantly wrong on the other 30%. <laughs> As a park and rec director coming from an area when people budget for parks in the state, when you guys budget for parks, you got two categories, state parks and metro area parks. Well, Stearns County is neither one. And it is irritating just to have that free flow going in. Then I got to serve on a committee that I actually could do something about that. And I met Chair Murphy, who is just ultimately fair, especially if you get your homework done at the committee. And Representative Wagenius, who like knows a lot of stuff about parks and SNAs and issues that I consider very sacred. We have a framework and a great possibility that we will be talking about in the future. Metro parks, state parks, and regional park areas that are unserved or underserved. And I kind of click my heels like in the miracle on 34th Street and say, it could happen. I had another opportunity when MYP, the youth training programs and the Boys and Girls Club programs, met some disastrous money. One was going to drop out, one's going to be cut way down. And working with the higher ed committee that we reinvented, redesigned, reprioritized, and resubmitted and saved those programs. They're smaller, they're meaner, but they, they do work. They actually have statistics that would prove to you, if you were an accountant, that they do work. Yeah, like I want to read pages of statistics. So we brought Oh, do they have great stories, though. So my testifier comes to the committee and tells how he was homeless for three years and lived with his mother and the two other children in the station wagon before he got involved in some of these programs. In the station wagon. He graduated as an honor student, and he's now in college. You got to have 66,000 people that are involved in those clubs have those opportunities. You cannot throw those type of people away. And I looked up at Chair Rukavina, and when this young man is testifying, Rukavina is tearing up. He's got tears in his eyes. And when he leaves, the testifier leaves the room, Rukavina follows him out with a great amount of vigor and shakes his hand and gives him a big hug. I said, I think we're going to get some money in this. 
but I was more impressed with Rick Avena's passion for that underdog than I have been with people for a long time. Rick Avena may be a character, but Rick Avena has character. I was so impressed that I went out and I bought a pair of underwear that are union made. <laughs> And I was in front of the mirror, crouching down, giving it my fighting pose. And my wife said, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, I'm going to have a friend, Rukavina, and I'm going to get in a social justice fight. And by golly, it starts at the bottom. <laughs> and we can whoop them. The staff at this place is beyond talented. I've been around a lot. I don't even know who some of these people are. I write, I said, look at this question. Give me a really neat answer. They give me a really neat answer. I send it out to somebody, and they write back, my Lord, you're smart. <laughs> I s oh. Can they work for me when I'm not here? I don't think so. <laughs> also, I would like to thank the citizens that vote for me. You guys had a hard time running for elections. I did not. Everybody in St. Cloud knows me. I go down a street, 80% know me. They either love me or hate me. And the ones that love me are right. And the runs that hate me should try to get over it. <laughs> so I didn't need any name recognition. My wife and I don't see each other very much. I think I'm home twice a week. We have reduced because of this job. We have reduced our fighting down to almost nothing. <laughs> In all truthfulness, for those people that know my family, you will know that my family right now is going through some serious health challenges. And this is an honorable place to serve. This is an honorable place to serve. But when your family has a need, that's God's work. And I'm going to do God's work. Thanks for allowing me the honor to serve with you.